Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. It is Brenda Schwader. I am here with uh, as the kickoff host, I guess, for the Great Bead Extravaganza Tucson Experience. Since I'm the only Tucson member <laughs> of us original 17, I want to welcome you. And we just thought this was actually Andrew's idea. Thank you so much to Andrew uh, for volunteering me. Um, and I'm so happy and humbled to be able to uh, to do this. Um, is to hello Terry, thanks for popping in. Um, this is only my second time on StreamYard, so I'm a little bit like, ah, how does this all work? But um, so excited today to be able to sort of kick off this fabulous weekend event. Uh, make sure that you follow, I think it's at six o'clock my time, five o'clock Eastern, no, not Eastern, sorry, it's five o'clock Pacific time uh, for the project preview that you're gonna be uh, seeing. So stay right here at, uh, if you happen to be watching on the Great Beat Extravaganza. Uh, group page and make sure that you scroll down if you haven't already and hit that uh, button to uh, register for the giveaways. Lots and lots of good stuff from all of us. Hi, Joellen. Hi, everybody. Hello, Facebook user from Norway. So that brings up a, um, a big thing. If you um, are love to continue watching live broadcasts, a lot of them are going live from StreamYard. So get on there and register with StreamYard. Um, there might even be some sort of like little link that you can do um, so that we can see who you are instead of just Facebook user, because there's a lot of you out there. So hi, Sue Delay. Yes. Yeah, so because uh, Tucson, the gym show, has been um, postponed uh, for 10 weeks until this April, we wanted to do a little bit of something just to kind of get that experience back. We love seeing everybody. This is our mecca, right, for the bead world, and uh, we sure uh, love it out here. And I get to be out here all year since I live here now. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lynn. Um, and so we wanted to recreate that community. Um, and we so love you guys. The uh, Great Big Extravaganza community is now 5,000 people large and growing all the time. Um, and we want to keep coming to you and giving you as much great content and uh, beady love as possible. So I put together, uh, at Andrew's request, a little desert walk, and this went through many, many iterations. But I'm proud to say that I was able to partner up with Chohono Chul, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, park um, that is right in the middle of Tucson. If you're familiar with the streets out here, if you've been out here for the Jump Show in the past, um, it is at the corner of Oracle Road and Ina. I might have that wrong. Ina and Oracle, maybe. <laughs> Still don't know my streets very well. Um, but hi, hi, Kimberly. So, um, so we have a little pre-recorded desert walk through their park, which was about the best we could do because, you know, we don't always have great uh, internet speeds in parks at the desert. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I went through a couple different iterations. So uh, without further ado, and I will say um, that uh, all of us 16 will be starting with those um, uh, ex these um, beautiful presentations tomorrow through Sunday. I'll also be doing the finale presentation. Hi, Laura. Um, and um, I just want to uh, welcome you and say take as as uh, advantage of as, as much as possible. We have put a little bit more room in between. We're going for one hour segments now instead of an hour and a half so that you do have time for potty breaks and maybe to grab a bite to eat. But <laughs> if you are as uh, as into this as you have been in the past, make sure to stock up with lots of snacks because we, uh, we don't want you to, to go hungry this weekend. We're looking forward to it as much as you are. And uh, again, um, please do, um, stick around for that preview in a, in a little bit. So um, there's gonna be a couple different segments. I'm going to take, um, let you know a little disclaimer here. I'm not a camera woman. Uh, this is I'm not a pro <laughs> professional interviewer. Uh, so I have a little bit of uh, mercy and patience with, and I'm not a video uh, cut um, editor. So, but I think it's still um, some really fun content. And I'll meet you back on the other side, okay? Are you ready for this? Let's hope all the tech works.
because my husband is in the meeting. All right. Mwah. See you in the flip flop. Let's go to here and here and there. Woohoo! So you can probably still hear me, I hope. Uh, this is uh, the Desert Walk with Brenda at Chohonachul Park, a great, a the great bead extravaganza sponsored event. Here's us. Just so you can see a little cute little picture of the three of us together. And uh, that's me, of course, in the center. Um, and we will introduce these other guys here. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody. Um, we are here at Tohono Chul, and this is one of the gems of the uh, the Tucson area and parks. And I'm here with uh, Stefan and Janelle, and um, I'm going to have them take it away. We're going to do several segments, and they're going to tell us all about a beautiful Tucson uh, arid environment and all that goes with it. So go ahead. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you. Yes, like uh, like you said, my name is Stefan. I'm the interpreter programs manager here. Uh, and then with my friend Janelle, we're going to take you around. Okay, great. And I'm Janelle. I'm a docent. And I want to say one thing before we get started, which is thank you to the Wilsons, to Dick and Jean Wilson. Dick Wilson was with the university right here in Tucson uh -huh. as a geologist. So we're going to visit some of his special spots here in the desert, um, and you'll see that we truly do have some real rock gems here. So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. And where will we be going next? So we're going to go up the succulent path up to the most gorgeous rock you've ever seen. Okay, I'm ready for that. All right, let's All right. hold on. Okay, guys, now we're going to go up the path and we're going to see that most beautiful rock that they are telling us about, too. Okay, we're at the overlook here at Tono Troll, and I just want to introduce you to our Malachite and Azurite uh, sample uh, that we have here. Um, as you can see, basically, the this is an, um, it's a copper ore. Um, the azurite and malachite are different states of oxidation of, uh, of the copper ore. The blue one is the azurite, uh, the green one is the malachite, and basically through time, as the azurite oxidate, oxidizes more, uh -huh. um, it turns into our uh, malachite. So eventually, this whole thing uh, will be uh, all green. It's um, beautiful. And how does it, how did, what makes it go at different paces or what makes it go at different colorations? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I know the initial, the initial oxidation state of the ore kind of depends on uh, where it was formed uh -huh. and how it was formed a long time ago. I don't really know what kind of breaking it was. It's slowly been kind of breaking apart and weathering. Oh, so and it it colorful. Oh, it's really? Colorful on the oh, look at that. It's splitting. And yeah, it's just now that it's exposed to, to the elements and it's weathering, it's just breaking apart. Oh, I love that. And why would we do anything but just go with what nature's already started, right? That's right. Go with the flow. All right. <laughs> okay. So, where will we go next? I think we're going to head up to the petroglyphs. Yeah, okay. Petroglyphs. Yeah. All righty. And one more thing about this beautiful blue. Yes. Uh, during the Renaissance, they would make a pigment from azurite. Mm -hmm. And then when we see some of those paintings from the Renaissance today, we wonder why they have green skies over the ocean. Uh huh. This is it. This is it. Oh, wonderful. That's Oxidation a great. of that pigment. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janelle. And off we go to the next place. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Okay, so you'll see why I titled this one, We're Barely a Speck in Geologic Time. It was a great quote by Stefan himself. Um, but I just wanted to kind of little, do a little disclaimer. Um, I will post some of the, what she's talking about, the petroglyphs or the newspaper rocks. Just didn't make it into this particular slideshow. So enjoy this next bit. <sighs> Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is petrified wood. And I know that you would be able to walk here and just lift it up into your arms and run away with it. Except <laughs> that it weighs way too much. If you can picture this, this was a tree. And the tree with its organic makeup is lying in a stream or a swamp. And its water passes through the rotting organic matter, it leaves behind crystals, right? And okay. you're used to working with crystals. Sure. So it leaves the crystals like a sand cast, as if you were making a sculpture. Okay. So the organic matter rots away, the crystals settle into the form that it leaves behind. Okay. And makes petrified wood. So that oh was rock wood and it's now rock. So that explains why it's so much heavier than, well, wood is heavy, but this is just amazingly heavy. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to lift a corner of it. No, no. And the person who put it here, I'm sure had a hand truck or more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's so, great. Uh, Stefan and I are going to take you. Okay. To one of our favorite places in the park because it reflects the efforts of mr wilson and uh -huh. his geologist friend oh. and it's a very unique structure people come from all over the world especially when they're here for the gym show to see this aha uh -huh. this is the this is the hot button yeah let's go i'm so i'm so spoiled <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Dick Wilson, who is uh, the co-founder of Pinochet uh, with his wife, Jean, he was a geologist for the University of uh, Arizona, uh -huh. uh, and they owned all of this property, and for a long time it was just uh, residential, uh -huh. um, and then to protect it from development, uh, because we're in town here, they decided to create Pinochet as basically a nature preserve. Um, and as a geologist, uh, you know, he was passionate about the geological history of the Arizona or of Arizona in general. So he came up with uh, this geology wall exhibit, uh, which is inspired from um, the fireplace at the Bright Angel Lodge at Grand Canyon. Okay. Um, where different or rocks representing different geological epochs are basically displayed in a natural pattern. Exactly. So if you want to catch <laughs> 1.8 billion year old rock, give or take a day. If you want to pet it. Uh, you want to pet an old, old billion year old rock. Uh huh. The oldest rocks start here. Uh huh. You follow the Santa Catalina Mountain history of its rocks. Okay. And you go younger and younger okay now we're underwater remember a sea covered us here okay hold your breath <gasps> so we've got the sedimentary <laughs> rocks here oh my goodness and then the water recedes <laughs> and then we find fossils in the sabino canyon area for instance here here oh, here oh my goodness Proving that we were underwater. <laughs> oh my and goodness. Now you're heading over to the baby rock. The young, yeah, the younger rock. And so <laughs> our our basin and range topography that we have in the south uh, in the southwest comes is basically represented in this area. So these would be rocks of um, of that period. I feel like I just went a million <laughs> years just in a few you steps. A you did. Years. These are 10 to 20 million years old. Oh my so they're goodness. They're very baby. Yes. <laughs> and then we, we humans are 
we're over there somewhere. Where? Oh, hello, humans. <laughs> hello, us. <laughs> we're barely a speck in geologic time. Yes. So you can see why people from the rock mineral gem shows come here. Yes. Because they can really kind of get a grip about that mountain range right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. <laughs> that they could mm -hmm. hike yes. up into. It's up in here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to show you a little bit later. <laughs> that wall is too high. What they're looking at. Yeah. Up in the mountain. Yeah. And then I know that they they used to, I don't know if they still do, they have um, ruby hunts in Sabino Canyon. And I don't know if, I don't know if they do that. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, ruby hunts. Mm -hmm. I see. Hunts mm. for the ruby. Yes, like a little dig, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Well, I feel very special just standing here. <laughs> so nice and shifts, isn't it? Oh, my God. Beautiful. Can I ask what, uh, is that I don't want to, there's too much of the, and uh, I might be getting ahead of you. This cactus is always just seems like, to me, now this is, what type of cactus? A totem pole. It looks like a rock almost. It's so, that's a yeah, good word for so it. It's, it's a um, genetic variant, right? Sorry, it's a, it, uh, it's a riot bar of uh, the totem cactus. It's, I think this one is mon monstrosa. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. basically it's the, so the cactuses grow from the tip, right? And so you can see the tip right here. Yeah. Um, so they kind of grow like trees. Trees, the new growth of the trees are the ends of the branches. Uh -huh. Whereas a grass, the new growth of a grass is the base of the grass. Oh, yes. So cactuses grow like trees, not like grasses. They okay. grow from the tip. And uh -huh. so basically the crown, where it grows isn't very regular in shape. Uh -huh. So it kind of grows all over the place and has this very textured cactus uh -huh. look. Well, I mean, for some people, like I it used to be, I just thought all cactuses had a lot of thorns. Mm -hmm. And this one seems to have been shaped. <laughs> yeah, and so not all cactuses have spines. Um, uh -huh. Most do. <laughs> uh, a lot of the prickly pear, uh, for example, they were selected to lose their spines. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're called uh, blind prickly pears. Okay. Uh, and those are usually the ones where you would that you would eat the young pads. Um, and make all of the jams and the syrups and the from the fruit. Yeah. From the fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although you don't need just about any prickly pear species, you could uh, make uh, make syrup from the fruit or make juice from the fruit. Mm -hmm. So you do have to process the spines off, mm -hmm. uh, but that, that that's fine. <laughs> it's doable. People have done it for millennia. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Oh, right. Uh, and you'll find even on the most nude of the cacti, you will see some fine hairs or mm -hmm. on where their young and animals can get to them. Oh. This one tends to be particularly bald. But wherever they're bald, <laughs> being eaten, yeah. they have a little defense there. Yes. That's <laughs> a defense. I love it. Yes. Okay, can we go to metamorphic? Yeah, let's go to metamorphic. Yeah, I was going to say. So you see that I learned that uh, cactuses don't have spine thorns they have spines <laughs> and we're going to learn a little bit more about cactuses as we uh walk along the path here guys it's fine it has tiny little buckets so the little brown that you can see uh -huh. those are actually like they're tiny little spines yeah so if you if you touched it you would get a lot of spines in your hand more than if you cut something with big spines yeah because you're not looking for them either <laughs> yeah they'll get you by surprise now, my husband said that, because we have the purple. Um, the Santa Rita for the pear? Yeah, Santa Rita. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think he thought it was Saurita, which is where we live. Oh. But so they're, they're, they have a lot of different common names, right? Uh -huh. That's the problem with common names of plants is usually they're regionally dependent. Ah. Uh. Um, and that's a... Um, 
so that that is a prickly pear that's kind of like uh, bred and selected for ornamentation okay so that's why it has that little like red that's why that red color is so pronounced mm -hmm. Um, you do live in the Santa Rita. Yeah. So all of the, I mean, any cactus under stress can develop that red color. Oh. Um, I don't like that, that it's stressed. And so with the Santa Rita, they're not stressed. That's just, mm -hmm. they kind of exhibit that color all the time. Okay. Gotcha. And yucca or yeti? <laughs> We will see. Make a root soap out of the soap tree yucca. The yucca. I sure you use the root though. Please do. Not root. the leaves. Not the leaves. This is the one I call the Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> you can make sandals out of this part. Oh, wow. They're so funny looking. Sorry, tree. So that was just a quick little one. Now we're going to go into what is a metamorphic rock. Um, and as a, the, the uh, hint here is that it's a rock that actually changes its physicality um, due to of an existing rock uh, by great heat and pressure. It's really beautiful to see. I never knew this before. So enjoy this one. <laughs> unusual because it's metamorphic and it's from the Tucson mountains on the west side. Oh. Um, I don't know who donated these. I don't either. But this used to be a parking lot right here for the bookstore. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. And after Mrs. Wilson, Jean Wilson, donated it to make the 49th acre. Oh. They had designer, architects come in and design this area to represent 10 green gardens, 10 vignettes. Oh, wonderful. So that people who are visiting the Haunted Tool and they live here and they want to have a garden just like this one, <laughs> <laughs> they can see what they need for that garden. Oh, great. Here's an example. Col that's columbine over there, the little short green. Uh -huh. And yet columbine normally was only up in the mountains. But here yeah. it's living in the shade of this wonderful Mexican blue oak. Ah, which is above us. And so all of these gardens are arranged to use no irrigation, to little irrigation, to a lot of irrigation. And you go to our websites, um, and basically get the garden designs for all of these little vignettes. No, uh, just post it on our website for inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, what to do. Beautiful. You know, they did talk about vignettes, you guys, and um, I almost want to go back a whole another time and talk about those. Um, just really did a beautiful thing. I didn't really get a good, we didn't have a lot of time to do all uh, justice to all of them, so I kind of just threw them all out and we kind of moved on to this next one. But if you guys are in town, let's go together and we can uh, see these beautiful um, vignettes. And this that we've stumbled upon is what, Miss Janelle? Grinding <laughs> <laughs> stones, mono, imitate, mortar and pestle. Oh, wonderful. And can you imagine the female's uh, arm strings <laughs> and how buff they must have been? So, for instance, this one wasn't used for nearly as long as this one was. Oh, my goodness. Just carving down through and getting, not only grinding the corn and the seed pods, but also collecting some minerals from, from the rocks, right? Because that then goes into what they're cooking. Uh -huh. And it's a great way to get minerals. Just like we get minerals from cast iron pan. Okay. Hey, Stephen, would you come here a sec? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hand you something. Okay. All right, ready? Right. It might be heavier, it might be light, but it's really strong. Yeah. What do you think? Heavy yeah. or light? It's not heavy at all. It's very light. <laughs> How strong is it? It's very strong. You know what it is? Uh, I do. <laughs> what is it? This is a saguaro root. Okay. So this is, you know, the saguaros 
uh, they're able to stand so tall um, because they have a series of ribs inside. A rib, um, And okay. so after one of the Soros died, we basically just collected the rib and we have it here. Yes. And they use it over ramadas mm -hmm. and as uh, structures because they're so strong. I didn't know they were so strong. That's yeah, nice. Very, very wonderful. So, yes, yeah, so I didn't know that about the Sawaro Sawaro so 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 ribs. I have to still figure out how to say that because that silly G is in there. <laughs> But listen to this one. This is pretty darn cool, too, guys. Welcome to a saguaro nursery. When saguaros are first born, they are just teeny tiny seeds that fall to the ground with the help of perhaps a bird. Mm -hmm. And it has to have perfect growing conditions. So it has to have a nurse made over it to protect it from frost in the winter yes. and from intense sun in the summer. Oh. So you can see that the Palo Verdes in this particular case are protecting the young saguaros until they grow up and out and over their nurses. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do they get stronger so they need less? nursing exactly they get tough on the top of their pate okay <laughs> <laughs> much like a baby much like a baby uh -huh. yeah. it's just fun to think about what is needed for certain plants to grow in the desert so that is interesting why they would be closer to the trees mm -hmm. to the any kind of tree a mesquite or uh, do they like the, the palo verdes they love being under mesquites they love being under palo verdes mm -hmm. and even creosote bush because those can get tall enough to uh -huh. help out um, and they're readily available in the desert so many other kinds of trees are not available in the desert right so right these exactly. are their ready-made nurses wonderful <laughs> i had no idea i like the palo verde even more now <laughs> i do too <laughs> I gotta say, these two are so adorable. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> see a little bit more of, especially Janelle, being the adorable self that she is. I just fell in love with these two and the whole park when I was there. So we got one last little video here. It's not so little. Um, that's gonna be about nine minutes, guys. So enjoy. <laughs> Children's Ramada. We tell stories to children right here. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at this one. He's, he's very tired. <laughs> it's the same guy. So, what happens to this guy that he's, he's uh, I Sometimes guess. Sometimes they totally just give it up. Yeah. But uh, sometimes they'll keep growing. <laughs> like it's going to come out. So what they tend to do is the, is they eventually turn towards the south, southwest. Okay. Because um, they want the plant to get the sunshine, but at the same time the cells grow differently on the north side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's a way of keeping themselves Crazy. cool and yet collecting sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> They're so smart. Yeah, so smart. <laughs> Janelle, as we're walking, uh -huh. you know, we haven't talked too much about animals. Oh, yeah, let's talk about animals. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite desert animal? Oh, my gosh. Usually our tourists or visitors ask what is the most scary animal. Yes. <laughs> I'm not into scary. I like favorites. <laughs> um. I even love, I don't have a favorite, but I do love the javelina, and a lot yeah. of people don't like the javelina. Yes. 
because they pull out all their fresh plantings and whatnot. Yeah. But I just think they're such an unusual Southwest animal. They sure are. You know, I have trouble telling people because they're not from the pig family. <laughs> They're from the what? Is it, how is it pronounced? Pe peccary? You got it. Did I? Woo yeah. Woo. And I didn't even study up. <laughs> <laughs> they are peccary, so they're a distant cousin to the European wild boar. Okay. Yeah, a very distant cousin. Mm -hmm. But uh, they do look that, like a boar. Yeah. Instead of having the tusks on the outside, they have the tusks right inside okay. of their mouth. So they had better dental plans. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Better dental plans. And then um, I call them gangs because if they want another javelina to join them, mm -hmm. they will go rub their haunch up against another one, and they have these nasty scissors. <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're pretty stinky, aren't they? <laughs> they're pretty stinky, and they rub it on the other one to say, "Hey, come join our." Our group, our gang. <laughs> so, would they do that? Are, are are they territorial? Do they do that to just anyone, or they see a single guy out there and they're <laughs> they're pretty. They have a pretty exclusive club going on. Uh huh. Yes, I think okay. there are a few that had to start their own. <laughs> <laughs> but I love those. And running through here, I love birds. Every kind of. Yeah. wonderful birds, yeah. even, including all the migrating birds. Mm -hmm. And then we have bobcats that come back and forth. Oh, and you do? Beautiful. We have coyotes that run in circles and, you know, play pranks on each other <laughs> right here. They're so playful in the middle of everything. And then a couple of years ago when we had a severe drought, mm -hmm. um, I saw map lion scat up by the wild life fountain garden that oh we have they, up there. they come for the water don't they, they? Came for the water because we're so close to the catalinas mm -hmm. uh yeah and then of course you know the little ground squirrels that are scampering everywhere <laughs> and i looked for the owl while we were out today we have a couple of owls uh -huh. who are you know, it's mating season. <laughs> yes, okay. And we have Cooper's hawks that fly over. And, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. we're very rich in wildlife, but we don't um, keep them in cages except mm -hmm. for the tortoises. Oh. So there's a tortoise living right in there. <laughs> well, isn't that something? There's a little tortoise house, everyone. Exactly. It's a piece of, uh, um, what is this, conduit? Or, I'm sorry. Uh, it, is it a? It's like a. Um, what is this house made of? Oh yeah. So they just kind of make a house out of <laughs> you know like a sewer pipe. Yeah. Right. 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 Or anything. anything yeah. Sewer really, pipe. It allows them to go into a kind of a cave-like experience mm -hmm. so that they can uh, <laughs> take a good long winter's nap until the nights are very warm. Uh -huh. Once the nights are warm, then they'll they, come out for good for the whole summer. They'll come out. But they really like their hot days and their warm nights. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, got to keep them cool. Okay. My favorite is the jackrabbit. When I oh, saw the jackrabbit. <laughs> my first one. I was driving, and thank God it was in a little subdivision, kind of uh, a little further out, and I actually gasped and, and screamed out loud. <laughs> they're I'm, so big. Yes, they're so big, and they're so erect. Mm -hmm. They're not hunched over like no, a No, yeah, they're, they're, like they're always sitting. Yeah, I never, yes. Biggest absolutely. ears you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I love them, too, and I've only seen a half a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've gotten pretty rare. I Thank you them. for remembering the chapter. Oh, well, it's always top of mind for me. And I hear these little statues remind us of our, of our quails that are scampering all over the place. So what we're going to do is come back right here by the exit. Okay. But even in Arizona, we have oases. 
Wow. Not very common, of course. Right? <laughs> so people often ask, well, aren't palm trees from North Africa and the Middle East? Yeah. It, you know, like, isn't that where all palm trees come from? Mm -hmm. But we do have native palms here. And we're going to do a little walk to uh, the Palm Oasis. I can't believe it. Oh, in I the know. It's very Tucson. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful blue palms, blue fan palms. <laughs> this might be what you see if you were out in the desert. Um, and you, you know there's water in there. If you see that kind of that dense, that vegetation like that yeah. all the palm yeah you have to work your way through it somewhere right? <laughs> here's an akatia yes and here's one that's just putting out some green leaves because of our recent rain ah. so this is drought deciduous beautiful look at that and then it's as still soon shot. as you have a rain it starts putting out those leaves any time <gasps> of year or oh. Or this time of year? Yeah, any time. Any time you have rain. With the rain and it's, mm -hmm. it's got enough energy to, you know, to so, okay. push it out. Here's here's my thanks <laughs> to the gods. Yes. This exactly. is my offering. <laughs> my candy and rouge from the flowers at the top when it flowers. How do you get to them? Yeah, right? <laughs> here's another one of our just most beautiful rocks. We have with, two. Uh, yeah, has the right malachite. Oh, and this must have been donated as well. Yes. And this one. Also, yeah, the Varenci mine. Oh, yes. so very generous. They were very generous to bring these in for us. Absolutely. I want to start that one over again. Sorry about that. That was doing so well. They were going to stop sharing. So, what did you guys think? I was over on the Beats, uh, the Great Beat Extravaganza group page, and it looks like you were enjoying it. Thanks so much. I had to laugh because uh Stefan had to leave us part way he had another appointment but Janelle was uh generous enough to keep going with me for a little bit longer I glommed on to her for a little bit longer and she adorable as I wrote down a couple of oh god let's talk about the animals and then when I told her about the jackrabbit she's like ah oh, the jackrabbit <laughs> So, so, so very exuberant and so enthusiastic, uh, which makes me think I should probably start a docent uh, thing of my own for Rhenish Waiter Jewelry, maybe. <laughs> and how do you get her over here? Because who wouldn't want someone like that uh, to be talking about your, um, your uh, business or this beautiful nature preserve that they have? Um, so thank you. I'm going to try to see if I can't put in the comments here. Um, let me see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I did. Look at that. I actually am organized enough to, let's cut and paste this. Uh, nope, it doesn't want to do that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm still going to try though. I've got some links here that I'm going to let's see. Let's copy these. Go back to here. I'm getting so good at this. Knock on wood. Um, so if you want to hear, uh, find out more about the park, like you couldn't Google it yourself, but here's some, um, some, some links. I know these work. They look a little scattered, um, but um, do check it out. And if you are a lover of nature and you say, hey, I really want to donate to their cause, I uh, see what a beautiful park it is. And I'm sure you know that ain't cheap to keep up. Uh, please do so. And just put a little note in it says from the Great Beat Extravaganza crew, because they were like, what are you doing and where is this going to? I was like, we're great. We're great. You have to do this for us. And so i um, making a little charitable contribution of my own for doing this for them. But I um, just thought I'd throw it out there for you guys to see. Um, also, I put a link in there uh, a little bit more about the history um, so that you can see uh, their benefactors and from whence they came, the, Wils the Wilsons, right? 
yes, the Wilsons, um, they were the ones to start this whole thing. And honestly, God, right uh, in the middle, I'll post um, another like still shot of Tucson and kind of where it is uh, within Tucson. It's within the city limits. Um, and so real easy to get to when you do visit. Back to the Great Beat Extravaganza. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Please do join us. I looked up while I while you guys are watching parts of the video here. We do start a project preview at 5 p.m. Pacific. So do that time zone math yourself. <laughs> Not good at it myself, so I'm giving you that task. 5 p.m. Pacific is the preview. And then we start uh, all tomorrow again with one hour presentations, um, 17 of them uh, in, into Sunday, all the way Saturday into Sunday. One hour presentations starting with Andrew Thornton from Allegory Gallery. He and William are going to be kicking it off in the morning, and they start at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay. I think that might be all of my notes. Thanks for joining me guys today. Mwah. I'm so glad to say special thanks to my husband and Jamie Yoshida. She tried to help me out this afternoon uh, as much as she could help me <laughs> in the midst of her busy, busy life. You're welcome, everyone. Mwah. Love you and we'll see you later at the Great Beat Extravaganza. Have a great and awesome weekend, you guys. Mwah. Love you. Adios. <laughs>